rocks in Blender 2.92 or 3 or plus. Hi there everyone, this is DJ from Garage from the Net Academy and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make rocks in Blender using Rock Generator add-on. And I'll show you a few additional stuff like making this desert, so I hope you'll find some useful tips inside. Let's jump straight into Blender. So if you've been looking for a rock generator add-on here, you can find it in the preferences in the add-ons section. It's now pre-installed in Blender, you just have to enable it. So let's type extra, because the add-on is really extra. Add mesh extra objects. Let's enable it. There's the location of the add-on, so view 3D, add, shift A, mesh, and you have the rock generator here. If you click it, you'll get a nice little rock. And if you want to add some more rocks, just click on the number of rocks. And you have a number of settings as well here. X, Y and Z scale, scale displace textures and other stuff that you can play around and check what they do to the stone and make it longer, wider, whatever. We can set up the smoothness and use a random seed or a specific seed. And the cool thing is we have some presets just to have a glimpse of what the add-on is capable of. You can do some asteroids, ice, river rocks, or sandstone, which I'll use for my particular interest scene. And you can see if you re-enable the add-on once more, it kind of remembers the settings you used the last time. And what it really does is adds a small mesh with a bunch of modifiers, subsurface modifier and a displacement modifier combined. And they are making the deformation procedurally to the mesh. You can enable and disable these modifiers. You can see this way which one does what. You can also edit that in edit mode by hand. And you can see the mesh kind of adapts to your tweaks. That's all procedural, so you can have a bunch of different variations with the regular modeling tools and have fun with it, experiment, and do some crazy shapes. The cool thing is that when you duplicate this and change the shape, it kind of gives a similar but randomly modified version of your rock. Pretty powerful. You can even delete the mesh here and add a monkey and there you go, you have a stone Suzanne the monkey. Why not make a blender temple out of this? No, just for the blender cultish? Do their crazy stuff in there? Oh, just that get rid of it and bury it in the sands of the desert to be forgotten forever. I'll add an ocean modifier to my plane and this will serve for a desert, not desert, desert. The ocean modifier fits that purpose perfectly because the sand dunes are kind of like the sea of sand. Sea of sand. I'll just tweak some settings, play with the size of the dunes to make them more pronounced, and position the plane below, make it repetitive, just to make my desert stretch to the horizon. It will be quite repetitive, but it won't be noticeable from the camera that much. It kind of looks already desertish. I tweak the composition and apply the ocean modifier, duplicate the rocks and now tweak some stuff by hand when I have my desert mesh with the modifier applied. Now let's add some textures from cc0texture.com, which is always useful if you want to get some quick materials ready. I added here uh, a bunch of textures which I plugged in manually and luckily I have the opportunity to speed up the process because it took really long. So the next time I'll show you how you can do that much quicker. And now I'll switch to cycles because I will be using the micro displacement feature for the rendering. Now let's add the sun and I'll use the new sky texture in Blender which is the Nishita sky model and it's pretty powerful. I'll make sure that the scene is lit and displayed with a correct exposure. Nothing is too bright. Just miss the sun disk, which is kind of invisible here. Oh, we have a spot there. But I want the sun to be bigger, kind of like this. And now I'll lower the sun elevation and make it kind of like a sunset sunrise scene. And the cool thing about that is I can manipulate these settings and then keyframe every value that I have here. So I can animate the sun pretty easily. Just pressing I over the value gives you a keyframe. And this way you can animate kind of a sunrise, just like the one I did in the intro, just adding keyframe position of the sun for the start of the sequence and the position of the sun for the end of the sequence. And it will interpolate automatically, making the sun move across my frames. 
and I can play with the settings of the air, dust and ozone just to make the mood of the scene fit my liking. And of course, the intro animated sequence was rendered on garagefarm.net render farm, which made the rendering process really smooth and quick. Any animation to render out tight deadline? Don't hesitate to use our service. You can check out the video description for a coupon code. If you register, use the coupon. You can get some free credits if you want to test out our service. Render faster with garagefarm.net. Now our rocks also need the textures. This time I'll use the trick with an old Wrangler add-on, which allows for adding the textures in one click. And now you can see the textures are a little bit deformed on my mesh. And that's because it doesn't have UVs. And to fix that, I'll use the box projection of each of the textures, which already looks a little bit better, but I'll use the generated coordinates for that. And now I can see it's looking much better, but we can see some seams. To fix that, I'll use the blend option to 0.5, which will kind of blend the seams together almost invisibly. Let's do that for every single texture in our setup. And now I'm pretty sure that the rock will look okay in the final render. Just with the scaling of the texture coordinates. Right now, let's pick all the other rocks and the textured rock at the end and click Ctrl L to link the materials to the other meshes. And right now we have all the rock formations textured with the same material applied. Let's see how it looks in the render. Now just make some small tweaks to the rocks and add a pulsating monolith inside or just scatter some rocks with the particle systems or do whatever crazy stuff you want to do with it and have fun. But that tutorial is already taking pretty long and the desert getting so dry that I have to get a sip. And that's it for this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And see you in the next tutorials from garagefarm.net.